Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're excited to be part of DevNet Create this year. My name is Jeff Hartso. I'm a product manager at Cisco IoT Control Center, working on developer relations, among a number of other initiatives. I'm joined today by my colleague, Yesh. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Yesh, short for Yeshwan. I'm a product manager on Cisco IoT Control Center as well, and I manage APIs. So we're going to talk to you today about scaling cellular connectivity management using the Cisco IoT Control Center APIs. I'll give a brief introduction to Control Center, and then I'll switch it over to Yesh, who will go into uh, getting your IDE set up with our uh, sandbox, and then making your first API calls. The connectivity of Internet of Things has promised radical transformation across a number of industries, from manufacturing and oil and gas to transportation, city and local government, utilities, and beyond. And there's a number of reasons that enterprises have been doing this. Some are looking to enable employees with new tools, improve worker safety, improve predictive maintenance, manage their fleet, or maybe achieve another goal. And in all these use cases, getting the right data is critical to your success. And in order to do this, enterprises need to digitize closer to the edge and closer to their customers, as well as deeper into their own operations. That is how they'll get the highly valuable data they've never had before. And cellular connectivity is a great way to do this because it provides reliable connectivity that's flexible and secure. However, managing cellular connectivity is really hard. We talk to customers every day and we hear the same things over and over again. One of the things we hear all the time is how slow and manual processes can choke growth. And by this, we mean things like managing SIMs uh, and provisioning those SIMs, changing rate plans, troubleshooting issues. If you're doing this for one device, like your own cell phone, that's pretty easy. But with IoT, we're talking about thousands, if not millions of devices. And that can get really hard and cripple these IoT deployments. The second thing we often hear about is the lack of visibility. And by this, we mean visibility both into these connectivity issues that need to be troubleshooted and remediated, as well as visibility into usage. Usage overages can drive a lot of cost and risk to the business as a whole, as well as the platform. The third thing we often hear about is also in the news media day in, day out. And that's how mobile IoT devices increase the attack surface. And if you're blind to these potential security threats, you can not notice them until it becomes a much larger scale attack and provides or creates real problems for your business and your application. And this is what Control Center is trying to solve. Control Center solves this via an integrated and automated connectivity management platform. And what does that really mean and how does it work? So first, you as an enterprise have devices and you place a SIM in them. That SIM allows them to connect to service provider cellular networks. Cisco IoT Control Center has worked with our partner service providers to create deep network integrations that enable our core capabilities. These include things like lifecycle automation. This allows management of devices by exception for ongoing operational support. Things like provisioning your SIM, changing your rate plan, uh, and connecting a large number of devices scalably and automatically to add capacity as your business grows. The second big area for us is analytics and diagnostics. Those deep network integrations provide a lot of data on your devices and the network that they're connected to. We can surface this data to provide diagnostics, allowing you to troubleshoot and remediate any issues with that connectivity much faster than you would be able to otherwise. Our analytics provide that visibility into those connectivity issues, as well as your data usage so that you can better manage those devices and your costs. On the security front, we offer comprehensive security at multiple different levels. First, at the device level, we provide security through things like IMEI allow listings so that your device can only interact with certain other systems. We also offer cloud security in our platform itself and security through automation. These automation engines allow us to set device rules and control device behavior, as well as set up alerts so that you can catch issues early on. On the cost management front, we allow you to monitor your costs, things like usage, 
and the costs derived from your core rate plans, as well as manage those rate plans themselves. So you're not caught with huge overages and can reduce your connectivity costs. We can also use our APIs for backend integration with your core IT systems. These are things like your CRM, your MDM, and your ERP. This means you can scalably uh, scale your business using our APIs and leverage data from your other platforms like SAP, Salesforce, and more. Now, many users will access these capabilities through our intuitive UI. These can be folks in operations, finance, support, your other partners, product managers, but it's this global API which allows you to do things like manage your, life, your device lifecycle, get data about usage, and integrate with those IT systems that makes our platform really powerful and really enables it to scale with your IoT deployments. So let's take a look at our core APIs and what those do. First, our customer API allows you to create, edit, and get customer details, including their name and contact information to properly associate those with the appropriate devices. Second, our devices API lets you get and edit details for your devices, including things like the SIM ID, the SIM status, sessions, custom fields, and the IP address. Our SMS messages API lets you send, search, and get details for SMS messages between Control Center and any of your devices. And last, our usages API lets you get historical as well as cycle to date usage for your data, SMS, and voice. Now, let's make this a little more concrete and take a look at an integration example of how we can use the Control Center API along with other applications that your enterprise may use in a real world example. We'll take the case of a fleet management enterprise. This enterprise will use Control Center and our service provider partner for connectivity and connectivity management. And we'll have a number of other cloud-based applications, things like a CRM, an accounting and invoicing application, as well as a device management application. Now, imagine this enterprise is onboarding a brand new customer. They'll first need to install a gate, a gate cellular gateway in the fleet for that customer. They can first update that CRM with the inventory and customer profile information for that new customer. That can then flow through to Control Center using our customer API in order to create a customer and provision the SIM accordingly. Then once that SIM is activated and connected to the cellular network, you can then use your device manage app application to initiate a firmware update on that new cellular connection. This way, the software in the fleet management device is as updated as it needs to be. Then at the end of the bill cycle, when you're ready to create an invoice for your customer, you can get billing data from Control Center using our APIs about usage as well as the actual bill and invoice itself. In this way, you can then take that information and generate an invoice and email in your own accounting and invoicing system to bill your end customer. This is an example of how an enterprise can take these different IT systems and put them together into a single use case that makes the business scalable as the business grows. And it's this scalability that's really enabled us to become the market leader in connectivity management. We have over 50 service providers across more than 100 countries, and that's more than 30,000 enterprise customers that use Control Center today to connect and manage more than 164 million devices. We operate in a number of different industry verticals, and we're number one in connected cars, the most complex and demanding of use cases for connectivity management today. I'm now gonna turn it over to Yesh, who's gonna talk you through getting your dev set up and making your first API call in our sandbox. Thanks, Jeff, for introducing Control Center and providing that necessary context. In this part of the presentation, I would like to talk about the demo. In this part, I will be covering how to set up your dev environment, making your first API call, and also how to get access to the APIs. Please navigate to the Control Center's uh, Control Center APIs landing page on DevNet site. When you scroll down, you can see an option to reserve a sandbox. Now, what does this sandbox do? So when you reserve a sandbox, we create a enterprise account, a dummy enterprise account, and assign 
few testable sims to that particular account. And we provide you access so that your APIs can actually receive the testable data. When you click on Reserve Sandbox, you'll be prompted to log in. And we support multiple identity providers, such as GitHub, Google, Facebook, and so on. And once you log in, you'll be redirected to Reserve the Sandbox. On the top right corner of this page, you can see the Reserve Sandbox button highlighted. When you click on it, you'll be asked to confirm the same. Once you confirm to the registered email address, you will receive an email with sensitive information such as username, API key, API expiration date. Please note that the username and API key are very important and are required to make uh, every single API call. For the demo to be successful, we need three important things. An IDE to actually do the development of the programs, a build tool such as Maven to compile and build the programs that you have developed on your IDE, and Java on which you actually run the programs. Now let's jump into the demo. I'm using Eclipse as a preferred IDE, and I'm using Maven as my build tool to actually compile and build the programs, and Java is already installed on my device or on my platform. Now I have imported a project here that was developed by the control center team to fast track the development process. In this program, what we'll do is we'll leverage three important APIs to show the power of our APIs. One is the get devices API, where we list all the APIs that are assigned to your particular account. Then the next one is edit devices APIs, where we pick a particular device and we change a particular attribute of the device and we, list, and we print it. And the third one is the get device details API where we get the details of a particular device and print it onto the console. Let me quickly walk you through this particular page that is devices.java file where all these APIs will be used. We have two important functions here, get devices and change device status. In get devices function, we can see that we are making the API call to list all the devices in assigned to your account and then just print it onto the console. In the change devices, devices status function, we pick a particular device by preferring their ICC ID and then we change the status of that particular device. If the status is deactivated, we activate it. If it is activated, we deactivate it. And once we change the status of the device, we use the third API, that is the get device details API and print it onto the console. Now, please note that for every API call to be successful, we need the username and the API key that was shared in the email when you signed up for the, or reserved the sandbox. A combination of username and password is encoded in base64 encoding and should be to be used in every single API call. As part of this sample code base, we already are encoding it in the base64 encoding and using it in every single API. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the demo. So in the first part, what I will be doing is we'll just list all the devices that are assigned to this particular account. The code has been written and compiled, so I'm just going to hit run. and we listed all the devices in this particular account. So here you can see we have devices and under the devices we have two particular devices. We have one which is in the activated state and we have another one in the test ready state. Now in the second part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out the get devices function and uncomment the change device status function. In the change device status function, what we will do is, as explained before, I'm going to choose this particular device ending with 408 and it is activated. So I'm going to change the SIM status to deactivate it and print the device details. And again, we'll run it to change the status from deactivated to activated and we'll print the result again. Let's go for it. As you can see here, the status of the device is currently activated. 
And once we made the API call, the status is deactivated. And after this, we are leveraging the third API that is the get device details and we are printing the all the details of that particular device. And here again, you can see that the status is deactivated. Now let's go ahead and activate the same device. All we need to do is run this program again because the code will take care of activating it. As you can see, the current status of the device is deactivated because in our previous call, we deactivated the device. So the current status is deactivated. And what we do is we have activated it by this API call. And here you can see that the status is activated. That was the end of our demo. For more resources, please visit our Cisco IoT Control Center API landing page under the DevNet. Here you can find more resources such as a link to the GitHub where we uploaded this code base, which is available for everyone. And we also have the documentation. As you see here, when you click on view the docs, the a detailed REST API documentation is also available. And thank you for joining us. Have a good day.